Welcome to Upcycling with Deb. I'm your host, Deb Colometta. I wrote a number one best-selling book called Best Offer, Best Life. And if you'd like to get a free downloadable guide, please visit my website, thedebsite.com. Can we talk about something? It's very controversial. Decanting, yay or nay? Decanting is when you take an item that you own, in this case, we'll talk about food, and you put it into a fancy container, uh, maybe a clear container from the Dollar Tree or the container store to help you stay organized. And a lot of organizational experts will say that decanting is a great way to bring pops of color and uniformity to your space. And if it looks good, then, you know, if you make your clutter look pretty, then it won't look like clutter anymore. I often think decanting is a lot of work, but it's solving a problem that may not need solving to begin with. It's messy. It's time consuming. There are a few examples where I like it and support it. Like, for example, if you take daily medication or vitamin pills and you have one of those pill boxes where you separate it by day, that's also considered decanting. Makes perfect sense. Helps you keep track of your medicines. Or if you have a box of cereal or an item that's just too tall or too big for your cabinet and you want to consolidate it into a more efficient package, that makes good sense to me, but I can only give examples where decanting actually created a problem instead of solving a problem. Like, for example, I bought this beautiful olive oil container, but when I poured my olive oil into the container, I spilled it everywhere. And I swear I'm still cleaning up greasy fingerprints from that spill. Also, I got a spice rack. And I started to pour the spices in because, of course, that can be a little bit annoying when you have all these different kinds of spices and they all look different. Some are in a cheap container, some are in the bougie high-end organic spices or whatnot. So I decided I would get a spice rack and fill all the bottles with my spices. However, all the empty bottles that I purchased were not big enough for most of the bottles that were actually in my cabinet. So then I had two bottles of oregano instead of one. Well, what do you do with the old bottle? Do you keep it in a shelf somewhere else? So we have uh, compounded the problem here by having a spice rack that not only the bottles aren't big enough, but also there aren't enough of the bottles when trying to experiment with more flavorful cooking. I have a ton of spices that I use pretty regularly to keep salt content down and fat content down. Having a spice rack, I mean, there wasn't one big enough to accommodate all the spices. So now I still have this overflow. So I haven't really solved any of the issues. I had oil and vinegar that I put into a cute little oil and vinegar container and it actually got moldy. And thank goodness it was clear because I looked and when I went to pour it one night after uh, not that long in the cabinet, I looked at it and I was like, oh, this is gross. It has like these floaty moldy things in it. So I got rid of that. And now I keep them separate in the cabinet and I think they're in better packaging, airtight packaging, which helps them stay fresher longer. I've heard of people putting cereal into plastic containers, but now you've got the problem of, doesn't the bottom of that plastic cereal container that you purchased, doesn't that get all nasty? And now you've got to wash that at the end of the cereal usage. And then you've got to wait for it to dry because if you pour cereal into a wet container, it's going to get mushy and moldy. So again, you're creating more work for yourself, not to mention how expensive some of these things are. I mean, you go into some of these organizational stores, you're looking at $20, $30 per container, and then you've got to get a dozen of them. It just becomes cost prohibitive. So I'd like to give you permission to not decant your stuff. Can you give yourself permission to do that too? And if you already bought all the goods to decant, 
wash them out and sell them using online yard sales because everybody wants to buy into that idea that they're going to overhaul their system and become more organized. So why not tap into that financially? Let someone else give it a shot. I don't know, send me a note, comment below and tell me, what do you think? Change my mind on decanting. I mean, if you have a maid like Alice on the Brady Bunch who can spend time decanting and keeping up with this, it seems like a system that is just a lot of work and expense for not a lot of value added. Or if you have an actual pantry, that might be another example of when you might want to have one of these systems. But for most of us who just have kitchen cabinets and limited kitchen cabinets at that, I just can't think of a reason to go through the time and expense of decanting. Thanks for listening to this episode of Upcycling with Deb. I'm Deb Colometta. Head over to my website, thedebsite.com for your free downloadable guide and connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at Deb Colometta. Thanks for hanging out.